Hello all. In this part of four of my table saw build, I'll be adding a router table at the opposite end to the saw. The router plate and fence for the job are designed and made in Germany by Sorter and were kindly sent to me to look at by a Sorter shop, links below. Starting with the router plate itself, it's a beautiful thing to behold in the flesh, very nice quality, sort of electric blue anodizing over a nicely machined solid slab of aluminium. This one in particular is compatible with my Bosch GMF 1600, but has fixing holes for the 1250, 1400, 2000 etc. As standard, each plate comes with two high tensile steel reduction plates, a superb fit and held in place by three surprisingly powerful magnets, allowing for, at least with those with the larger holes, tool free changeover. For those reduction plates with a smaller hole you can't quite get your finger in to remove, there's a little recess in the plate to insert a flat screwdriver to help lift it out. In the corner of each plate you have the usual countersunk fixing holes, along with two grub screws in each corner for levelling. On this point, a neat accessory saw to do are these steel levelling frames. In an 18mm surface like mine, there's only about 8mm of material left once you've routed out for the plate. These levelling frames give the adjustment grub screws something solid to bear against rather than digging into and possibly deforming the remaining MDF. It's a great idea and certainly something I'd recommend if you're doing a router plate in 18mm melamine MDF or some such. So the fence is much what you'd expect from a router fence. Sort of shop do a number of router fences from other brands from Trend to Woodpeckers, but this one I chose as it's their own universal fence. Coming as standard with a guard, 57mm dust extraction hood at the rear and a number of fixing and spacer options for accessories. You have the usual melamine faced MDF sliding fences at the front with wing nuts at the rear for adjustment and it's all based around a reassuringly substantial aluminium extrusion. Sort of supply 8mm bolts and wing nuts for fixing the fence to the appropriate track, but as I have 30mm track with 19mm slots, I'll use my own fixing option. Whilst the mounting slots in the base of the fence are generous, this being an afterthought to my build, they will unfortunately need extending a little to match the track I've already installed. So here's the fixed base from my Bosch GMF router kit, plastic sub base removed. This has an allen screw accessible from the bottom, or top as it will be when mounted under the table, for micro adjust. I really like that whoever designed this router plate insert clearly thought about the orientation of the router base. Only one hole is provided in the plate to access the allen screw. This means when you mount the router plate with the branding bottom left as you look at it, the way that makes sense, all the controls on the router base are accessible from the front of the bench, like the locking lever, motor release and power button although access to this is moot as it will be rigged to an MVR switch. It shows those designing the products are actually thinking about how they'll work in use. Not always the case. Another neat thing sort of sell is a router template for routing the recess. Not a necessity, but being CNC machined, a nice option for perfectionists. I'm actually oversizing my recess and cut out slightly, by about 1mm all round, as I plan to use my old cheapo router plate to mount my jigsaw to on occasion. It's annoyingly just a fraction bigger than this sorter. With the recess and cutout done, off camera I edge banded the walls of the recess so when I swap the plates, risk of damage to the melamine surface is reduced. Small blowtorch and burnisher if you're interested in how I went about edge banding an inside edge, hence the odd scorch mark you can see around the recess. So, levelling frame in first. I use this to size the support lip around the recess by the way. Then the router insert plate, branding and controls to the front. As my cutout was slightly bigger than the plate, I pull it and set it tight to the front just so I know it's always parallel to the sliding carriage when I remove and replace it. I use a small steel rule to slide around the surface to dial in my adjustments with the grub screws. Then it's time for the fixing bolts. The ones supplied are around 50mm long, I guess to give options to those mounting to thicker tops. I've ordered some 30mm ones and wing nuts to make removal easier. No need to over tighten these bolts if you fit your own, particularly if your adjustment grubs are doing any actual work. You'll just deform the recess mount. Double check any adjustments needed when tightening down too. You may have to adjust, tighten, adjust a couple of times or so to get it right, but it is worth the time to get these things right. So on to setting up the fence. As I mentioned earlier, this being an afterthought to my table saw, my tracks are slightly too close together for the existing slots in the router fence, as you can hopefully see in this shot. So I'm going to extend the slot slightly with a 10mm bit in my drill. As ever, this comedy toy drill from Shapak is removing material 2 or 3mm away from where I actually want it removed. Why do I persist with this thing? 
Anyways, nothing that can't be made good with a bit of elbow grease and filing. So, slots extended, I fit the, now ubiquitous on this channel, red bicycle quick release seat post cams. These go into M6 19mm sliding T-nuts and the cams are spaced up using a couple of the many spacers sort of supply with the fence. So on the face of the router insert plate are laser etched millimetre markings. I'm just aligning the fence to them to see where we're at and if they're true to the edge of the table. Turns out they are, with centre marks 161mm from the table edge. Router cutters being round, fence square to the plate or table isn't fundamental like it is to a table saw, but I just like to work this way, knowing all components relate to each other. Sort of do a number of dust extraction kits for the fences, including one for this particular fence with its 57mm hole. However, I've had this Bosch extraction set for their GTS table saw laying around for ages and was pleased to find it fits pretty well. Not super tight, but perhaps a little PTFE tape or something will help when I get round to it. The center etched markings on the plate are bang on center to the router spindle. I figured it would be a good test to use the markings to set the fence to see if I can't create a 6mm housing a set distance from the workpiece edge. Something like that we'd create for white faced hardboard for cabinets. I'm setting the fence 9.5mm from the centre mark, with a 6mm bit in the router, this should mean the housing is set back 6.5mm from the edge. Why I chose to do a half mil increment rather than a full mil, I've no idea. I'm just like that sometimes. I was in a 6.5mm mood I guess, know what I mean? I opened the fence a little, just for some extraction, though to be honest, extraction for this kind of housing is better placed at the front, rear and below the cut. But in the absence of front and rear extraction, I tell myself a little sideways extraction might help. The slots on the top of the fence extrusion are a little odd. I thought they were the usual 8mm, but 8mm bolts don't fit. Instead, I found M6 bolts, whose heads I'd ground down to work with my 20mm profiles, work great to mount the featherboard to the front. Again, Salter do provide adequate spaces to clear the featherboards of the sliding fence faces, if not the fixings themselves. I actually did my first cut forgetting to attach the extractor, hence the dust you can see on the table. Dust is certainly less with the extractor, extracted from below no doubt, but a fair bit remains inside the housing itself. I may try sealing off with some tape the open sides of the Bosch router base at some point. I'm sure this will help with extraction from below. Given I was aiming for an unexplainable 6.5mm, I'd say the results were pretty perfect within six hundredths of a mil just using the marks on the plate. I'd say from that you could use the etched markings on the router plate with confidence. So here you can see I've swapped to a fairly large chamfer bit, so I swapped to the larger reducer plate. This cutter being bearing guided, I back the fence up to it using a long steel rule. This cut gives a better idea of what the fence side extraction is like. It's not bad and I'm sure it would be improved a little if I seal the open sides of the base below at some point. The front fence is open a little wider for the bit, it was also noticeable how well aligned each fence piece is. Nice and smooth flow between the two pieces. Now of course, the route a bit presumably being a perfect 45 degrees, I thought it worth checking anyways. I have checked with the centering pin that the plate and table were 90 to the router spindle. But these being test cuts, I just like to check as I go, and all looks well. For a final little play around with the setup, I'm using the sliding carriage to square up this small piece of oak. I'd usually do this on a table or miter saw, but hopefully as you can see, this has done a nice job of squaring. square, I can now use a radius jig to round off a corner. It's worth mentioning that material slides really well over the finish on this sort of plate. The machining is super smooth and the anodizing obviously high quality. My old budget one, although flat, did have a slight machining texture on it which offered a little bit of resistance sometimes. In that respect alone, this plate is a vast improvement. So I couldn't be happier with the router insert plate. Not only does the finish, combined with the steel reducer plates, look exquisite and tasteful, but it's well thought out and as a result, great to use. 
Although Sorta aren't unique in offering magnetic reducer inserts, these look distinct and being steel should be a lifetime accessory. You can buy extra individual reducers as well as sets and undrilled blanks too. I can't think of a single negative to these Sorta router plate inserts if I'm honest. Certainly a premium product. The fence I'm also happy with. No frills but effective out of the box. A couple of minor niggles I have with it are, given the sliding front fences are Melamine MDF, I would have liked some way of adjusting them if needed, by way of some nylon grubs perhaps. Very few router fences offer this in fairness, it's just I know from working with it, these MDF products can have slight variances. Thankfully, mine were bang on and stood square. Another little niggle is the slots on the top and front of the fence aren't the same. I would have preferred the more standard slot found on the top, also on the front. Easily overcome, mind. Now Sorter Shop are a German based company so prices are in euros. Delivery of my items took 5 working days to arrive. The router plate I have retails for €135.50 which currently is £120. The levelling frames are €19.44, around £17.35 and the fence sells for €116.88 or about £104. The router plate might seem expensive but the only other premium plate really comparable featuring steel magnetic reducer plates is the Incra Magna Lock, selling for around the same money. So if you're considering investing in a good quality router table, then I highly recommend giving Sorter Shop a look. They do plates compatible with other major brands like Makita, Festool, Maffel or Triton etc. They also do some router lifts that look simple in design yet beautifully engineered. One I particularly like the look of being their tilting router lift. They also do their own range of motors, with their smaller ones actually made by Maffel. You'll also find table frames and tops there, right the way to complete router table sets. Add to that they're an outlet for other popular brands, it's a site worthy of investigation. I'll leave links to the site's homepage, as well as the individual items you've seen in this video. I'd really like to thank Andy from Sorter for getting in touch and offering me the opportunity to try some of these products too. Much appreciated. For those of you who might have randomly landed on this video, do check out the other three parts in the series, either via the playlist on my channel or clicking one of the links on screen. Thanks for watching.